You know, the good news about that is that Elon has a president that he lets run the company, and her name is Gwen Shotwell. When it comes to SpaceX's strong growth, can't help but mention the company's secret sauce, President Gwen Shotwell. Many even believe that SpaceX would be far from the October launch date of Starship Flight 5 without Shotwell's say-so. So how did she make that happen? Find out everything in Tech Maps Today episode. SpaceX, well known for its ambitious goals and rapid development of reusable rocket technology, has been eagerly preparing for Starship Flight 5, the crucial milestone in the Starship program. The Super Rocket's fifth flight will mark the first time it has been caught by Mechazilla, representing a bold step forward in the rocket's goal of full reusability. This will pave the way for revolutionizing space travel by dramatically reducing costs and increasing accessibility with its immense payload capacity and ability to land on celestial bodies. Starship has the potential to open up new frontiers in space and pave the way for human missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. However, regulatory challenges and environmental concerns are always huge obstacles for SpaceX on its way. In September, the company received a launch license date estimate of late November from the FAA, a more than two-month delay from the previously communicated date of mid-September. This delay wasn't based on a new safety concern, but instead driven by superfluous environmental analysis, largely driven by political motivations. This FAA movement caused a wave of strong protests from the space community. SpaceX is not just Elon Musk's. In fact, he only owns about 40% of the company's shares. For that reason, the FAA targeting Elon Musk through SpaceX is a wrong strategy, since, in fact, they are actually attacking unrelated people who work in SpaceX, such as Kathy Luters, Gwyn Shotwell, Mark Juncosa, and thousands of other workers. Furthermore, it also impacts the entire U.S. aerospace industry, as SpaceX has a monopoly in this field, responsible for putting the U.S. ahead of China in the space race. It explains why Gwyn Shotwell, who inherently took place quietly behind the scenes at SpaceX, ultimately speaks out to defend SpaceX and its space programs against unfounded accusations at a congressional hearing with the U.S. House Committee. But for sure, we want to continue to enhance regulatory efficiency so that regulation does not hold back technology and innovation. This is not an issue for our competitors overseas. It is an issue in the United States, less so in Texas. She hints at the recent sanctions that the U.S. federal agency has imposed on SpaceX. The FAA's first attack was on August 12th, when it suddenly announced to postponement of hearings on an environmental review linked to SpaceX's plans to increase the number of Starship launches from its South Texas facility. It goes after CNBC's controversial article regarding Space Warax's environmental issues. The plot thickens as on September 12th, SpaceX received a Starship Flight 5 launch license date estimate of late November from the FAA, threatening seriously to the company's plan. Plans. FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker, during a September 24th hearing, explained that Starship faces further delays because SpaceX filed a launch application without disclosing it was in violation of Texas law. The Environmental Protection Agency said the company violated the Clean Water Act by failing to contain a liquid oxygen spill at its Starbase launch pad, prompting a $150,000 fine. SpaceX denied that it violated any laws at Starbase but ate the fine to avoid any consequences. SpaceX also faces more than $630,000 in proposed fines from the FAA for violating its launch license during the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches in 2023. Whitaker said the fines are unrelated to the Flight 5 setback, but the agency claims the company's unauthorized use of a new control room and fuel farm regarding those launches raised safety concerns. Musk, in response, said SpaceX will fight the penalties in court. Of course, the $100,000 fines are not a big deal for SpaceX. It looks like a heavy blow to the company instead, whereas it is ramping up its progress towards the goal. Shotwell expressed concerns that government bureaucracy is hindering progress, especially as SpaceX strives to continue launching its massive Starship from South Texas, expand its Starlink satellite internet operations in Bastrop, and enhance engine testing at the McGregor site. We can build a rocket and get it prepared for launch faster than we can get the uh, 
bureaucracy to approve us to, to, to launch. Only by addressing these concerns can businesses thrive. As Shotwell stated, You will in probably enhance the regulatory environment, and there's just a caution that um, you really want to make sure that regulation doesn't impede progress. Shotwell's words at the September 26th hearing actually worked as Starship Flight 5 progress is currently looking positive. SpaceX, on October 7th, officially announced that Starship's fifth flight test will launch on Sunday, October 13th, much sooner than November, as the FAA previously declared. Starship's fifth flight test is preparing to launch as soon as October 13th, pending regulatory approval. Although the FAA has not confirmed that, in its updated statement, it no longer mentions a late November target date. It can be said that what she said at hearing this time all stemmed from her deep love for Texas, home to Starbase, which she describes as a, quote, a one-of-a-kind facility to manufacture, test, and launch the most advanced rockets on the planet there. Texas, which I call my home office now. Since then, we've established state-of-the-art facilities development test and launch facilities. We've improved both in McGregor and we've developed these facilities down in Starbase at Boca Chica, Texas. Shotwell also emphasized the importance of SpaceX's missions and the company's work in Texas, all of which aim to advance humanity to new heights. At Starbase, we are paving the way for humanity to be truly spacefaring and a multi-planetary species. I know that might sound crazy. It sounded crazy to me when I joined the company over 20 years ago, but I really am committed to this. So how about you? Do you agree that Gwyn Shotwell contributed a lot to SpaceX's victory over the FAA and launching Starship Flight 5 sooner? Drop a heart icon if you agree. Apparently, this isn't the first time SpaceX representatives have directly raised their concerns regarding the FAA's process with Congress. Last October, SpaceX executive William Gerstenmaier, the company's vice president for build and reliability, delivered the warning to the Senate Subcommittee on Space and Science at a hearing on commercial space regulations. The remarks come as SpaceX was facing an environmental review by the Fish and Wildlife Service and a safety review by the FAA of plans to launch Starship Flight 2. It's a shame when our hardware is ready to fly and we're not able to go fly because of regulations, or review, Gerstenmaier said, noting that SpaceX has been ready for a month to launch the next Starship test flight. Licensing, including environmental, review, often takes longer than rocket development. This should never happen, and it's only getting worse. He also claimed the regulatory delays have nothing to do with public safety. During the hearing, Gerstenmaier did recommend that the FAA double the staff in the licensing division of its Office of Commercial Space Transportation. In addition, the FAA should be given accelerated hiring authority to draw from the best pool of candidates. Staffing has been a big problem for the FAA for a while, the consequences of which were clearly evident in SpaceX's arduous two-year journey to get its initial Starship launch license. 500 days is the total of time that the U.S. federal agency spent to review a single launch license application for Starship's maiden flight. As they said, that is the longest the agency has spent on a single launch license application. The FAA explained that extended time was due to the complexity of the application and the size of the vehicle, the largest ever to seek a commercial launch license. That created a strain on the resources available to the agency to both review that application and work on other license applications. Despite SpaceX's efforts to raise the alarm, the FAA's progress on resolving the issue has been slow. Clearly, it is an unacceptable thing. For nearly two years, SpaceX has voiced its concerns with the FAA's inability to keep pace with the commercial spaceflight industry. It is clear that the agency lacks the resources to timely review licensing materials, but also focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to public safety. These distractions continue to directly threaten national priorities and undercut American industry's ability to innovate. There are about nearly 45,000 staff to oversee and manage the national airspace system in the FAA, three times SpaceX's workforce of about 13,000 employees. Okay, I know that the FAA's amount of work is very huge as they are responsible for regulating all aspects of civil aviation in the U.S. However, despite tons of work and limited employees, the FAA still has enough resources to take care of little things on SpaceX's rocket that, you know, are unrelated to public safety. It would be a time bomb for America, and Elon Musk pointed the finger at it directly.
America is being smothered by ever larger mountains of irrational regulations from ever more new agencies that serve no purpose apart from the aggrandizement of bureaucrats. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.